Stop the FOMO. You're ready to get home theater speakers because you want to elevate your experience, the immersive effect of home theater. Dolby Atmos or Oro 3D or DTS, it doesn't matter. You are sick of your sound bar or your TV. You want to be surrounded by sound above, around you, below, <laughs> everywhere. The question is, that's like 14, 13, 14 speakers. Well, which brand, which model? Because the last thing you want to do is box up 13 speakers and send them back, right? Then it gets to, okay, what characteristics are important to getting the right speakers? What have I chosen? And what are alternatives to my choices that may fit your budget or use case or the classic spouse acceptance factor? So what we're going to do today is break it down into three parts. The first part is the characteristics I believe are important, that are important when shopping for home theater speakers, uniquely different than non-home theater speakers. And so keep these characteristics, measurements in mind. And second, what I chose, right? What, well, in this case, I chose the Genelec Active speakers and they fit my use case perfectly. So I'll tell you what my use case is, whether you share them and Third, alternatives to the Genelec. You may not want active monitors. You may want something a lot less expensive than Genelecs. What are they? What should you be looking for? Because what we're going to go over today will apply whether you're shopping for home theater speakers this year, next year, or in five years. I don't think things will change that much. So let's get ready to go shopping for speakers that will immerse you in three-dimensional surround sound. And today's video is sponsored by WhoKeys. Yep, you need an affordable solution to getting that Windows 10 Pro OEM key, right? You finish your build and you have less than $20 to your name. <laughs> well, with WhoKeys, you can actually get a Windows 10 Pro key for $14.99. Just use my code SF20 and boom, apply it. It's only $14.99. And within minutes, you can activate your Windows Pro 10 key. But that's not all, folks. WhoKeys also sells other codes and keys like Steam, Origin, Uplay. You can explore the website and see what other discount codes works for you. And of course, let's not forget productivity software like Office 2016. $45 after the SF20 discount code are you kidding me? We'll start with generally, what are the characters of the speaker that you're looking for when getting home theater speakers, right? Are home theater speakers that much different than audiophile, hi-fi, music listening speakers? Maybe, maybe not. It depends on how the hi-fi speakers were designed. Home theater speakers have a very specific design objective. But before we go there, I want to talk about just hi-fi speakers in general and their use and why they're not always perfect or great for home theater. In the hi-fi listening space, right, you only have three general components. You have the speakers, you have the preamp volume control amplifier, and then you have the source, vinyl, digital, streaming, whatever that is. Those three points, speaker, amplifier, volume control, and the source, the goal of this group is to get as pure of a sound as possible. You don't want any changes from the source to the speaker, which means that the speaker, the character of the speaker is most of that music. That's why you have people that love horns or that love uh, electrostatics or that love all these different types of speakers because they have their own unique sound signature that changes as you change the speaker. Home theater, you don't want that. You, you don't want the speakers to bring out their own sound signature because in the home theater system, it's all about immersion. It's not about, hey, you know what? That bullet whizzing by my ear. It sounds like it came from an electrostatic speaker. No, you just want the bullet to accurately whiz by your ear. That's it, right? Whereas here, the voice of the person singing may be different on an electrostatic than on a horn, than on a traditional, and then on a coaxial, right? All of these, the speakers put a lot of their personality into that sound. And also, music listening, your eyes are closed or the lights are off, you're focused on the sound. Well, in a home theater system, your eyes are not closed. 
the lights may be off, but the TV or your projector is on. And that visual stimuli, it reduces your ability to hear those very particular differences, right? The nuanced differences between speakers. It's not as noticeable. So it's not as important selecting speakers for their sound signature. What's important is, and well, let's get into the actual speakers themselves for home theater. What's important is controlled directivity. Number one on my list of all the characteristics for speakers in home theater is controlled directivity. What that means is when the speaker, let's just take this one I have, mine as an example. When you listen on axis right in front of the speaker, there's a certain sound. But then as you shift off axis a bit, right, you go from being in front to the side, farther off to the side, the sound remains consistent. The sound quality is consistent. Let's look at a frequency response curve. The original curve, as you can see for the speaker, is you know pretty flat, but as you go off axis, right, each line below it is 5, 15, 30, 45 degrees off, you see it looks very similar. That means that the sound of the speaker doesn't change much as you move away off axis from the speaker. That is a sign of a great home theater speaker because, and this is why, the speakers that are around you may not be on axis because in the audience right now, you in the listening position, in the center, you may be on axis of all the speakers, but what about the people in front of you, next to you, behind you? They may be off axis and they will benefit from speakers that have great controlled directivity. Now, a lot of people are asking, well, wait, what about the frequency response curve of the speaker itself? So let's talk about the Klipsch RP600M. Their response curve is actually kind of terrible, right? We talked about it in our interview with Amir of Audio Science Review. So there it is. That's the measurement for you. Look at what's happening in is. this region. Stunningly poor, right? Why would I want every piece of music or every movie that I watch to have this part of the response taken out? And why do I want the highs to be exaggerated as this one is? The clip is, it has this dip. It's just, it has this tilt up. It's just not good. It's not flat. However, in a home theater system, you could tune that out. <laughs> Software, whether it's Odyssey, Dirac Live, Room Perfect, whatever your choice of cinema processor, you can tune your speakers to correct and make it flatter. And because it has good control directivity, guess what? That correction spreads off axis as well. I mentioned that the directivity is excellent. What, what does that mean? That when you say directivity is excellent, what is that again? Off-axis response is very similar to on-axis. So it's How crappy off-axis and crappy on-axis. Which is a good thing in this game. <laughs> because you look at it and you say this early window one tracks this one quite well where we have a problem. Mm -hmm. Whenever these two match, means you can use equalization to fix the problem because ah, both on and off there you go. you lift it together. And so you can make a speaker that doesn't quite have that flat neutral response to make it flatter and it stays flat off axis. So again, it goes back to the speaker's controlled directivity. This cannot be changed by software. It's all in the design of the speaker. Now, I like the Genelec because it has a waveguide and having a waveguide does help with controlled directivity and it controls the third factor, which is dispersion. I don't want a wide dispersion speaker personally. Why is that? Why dispersion means that when a sound comes out, it does, you know, it, it, this is the sound, right? It goes all out like this. So why dispersion is at a wide angle, the sound is the same volume, strength, and nature, whether it's in front or a little bit wide. The reason I don't want that is I have nine speakers around me. And if they're all wide, they're going to start to interfere with each other. And the clarity of the object placements, right? The immersive effect, I believe will be diluted if it's too wide. That's one reason. The second reason is if it's too wide, it starts bouncing off the walls as well. Narrowing it down limits it where the sound just hits me 
and doesn't start going crazy bouncing off walls. Because again, I have nine speakers, so I could control it, have it all facing me, so I could hear precisely the placement of the objects around me and above me, because they're all fairly controlled directivity and not too wide, right? It's kind of medium, not too narrow either. So that's why I chose the Genelex. It has both controlled directivity and it's not too wide. That takes us to, well, the various speaker models. Let's say you don't like the Genelex. They're too expensive or they don't look good and you don't want <laughs> active, right? These have their own amplifiers built in. I like them active. I don't want a bunch of amplifiers out there. I don't like matching amplifiers to speakers. I want amplifiers built specifically for the speaker, matched to the crossover, and I'm done. I don't want to think about it because my environment, right? This is a studio that I use to listen to Atmos mixes, movies, so I can get a sense of the accuracy of the placement of the objects so I can share with you. Hey, in this movie, you know that bullet, it should be like right here. Do you hear that bullet? The speakers, unless they're accurately placing that bullet, is of no use to me. But for you, you may want a pretty speaker. You may need that spousal acceptance factor that this speaker may not have. And so there are other brands and makes that offer that. We've talked about Klipsch, but there's also JBL, Revel. There's a lot of models out there. Just focus on that controlled directivity and not too wide. If the angle to me, I like it around 30 degrees, right? Some people want it a little bit wider because they have less speakers, only five, maybe 45 degrees is not too wide. I think you should not go beyond 45 degrees. It gets too wide, in my opinion, for use in a home theater because now I think you're bouncing off the walls too much. You may need a lot more room treatment to control all those reflections, but that's my use case. Now, as far as that measurement, how wide is that dispersion? That's not always available. Some reviewers offer that, some reviewers don't. All Genelec speakers tell you how wide the dispersion is. That's why I like Genelec. I know exactly what I'm getting, which segues and takes us to measurements. What if you like a speaker and no measurements are available? So we'll start with third-party measurements from reviewers like Audio Science Review. We've had Amir on, talk to him about it. They have a great list of speaker measurements that... And of course, Aaron's Audio Corner and Audioholics, another longtime favorite. Both of these sites also provide directivity measures that will be useful to your decision making. I've linked all these sites below for you to check out later. And because there's so much information out there from so many models, you're not limited to any one or two models. There's more and more being added to these various third-party review sites every week. So keep on checking back with their sites. And with Amir, you could actually send him the speakers yourself and he'll measure it for you, right? So these are really great services for consumers to check out what is that directivity before you commit to buying 13 of these things <laughs> for your home theater. So if you find this video helpful, don't forget to click like and subscribe for more of this as we get more Atmos content to review. We'll see what happens and how good these speakers are at placing those little objects around us. Until next time, stop the FOMO.